What is going on YouTube? It's Daniel here back at it again with another video and it's been a while since I've done an Amazon FBA video but I figured you know since we have all these new subs to the channel thank you all for subscribing. I would bring it back into the channel and I have been just searching for a product for a while and you know I want to bring Amazon FBA back into the channel a little bit more so I decided to make this video. So whether you're brand new to Amazon FBA or you know you've been doing it for a while, if you're brand new you can go check out my older videos, just go into my channel and look up Amazon FBA. I have tons of videos on it and I explain and I talk about a course that you can take and all that good stuff. And then if you have been doing Amazon FBA, this video should make a lot of sense to you and be really helpful. I have failed, you know, two products myself, so I've learned a lot about you know, just little things that you should be doing when you're trying to find a product or when you're going to sell it. And I really want to just share my, all of my knowledge and everything that I've learned, I guess, over the past six, seven months of doing Amazon FBA. So rather than just listing off one and then summarizing it, I kind of want to just list off everything that I wrote on this list. And then I'll go over it, each one a little bit and kind of just you know, go more into depth about what I mean when I wrote this down. So the number one thing I wrote was what kind of product is it? Google possible shipping issues. So I got burned with my magnets, as some of you may know. And basically they just, the packaging that I made for them or that I had my supplier make didn't contain the magnetism that well. So the magnets, even when packaged, would still, you know, magnetize different things and it just brought a lot of issues with shipping. So when Amazon went to fulfill my order, it would go through and then it would just never show up. It'd be lost in transit or, you know, whatever. It'd be having issues. So just Google possible shipping issues. Make sure that the product you're selling isn't going to be, you know, a huge headache to ship and it's going to be nice and easy, you know, no issues like that. And most products won't have problems, but it doesn't hurt to you know prepare for the worst so look up possible shipping issues is one of my biggest tips because I got burned on that and you know you possibly could too because most products you sell on Amazon are really weird quirky things and you know shipping issues could come up so the th second thing I wrote is don't rush into a product you know I made the mistake of feeling like Amazon FBA was on the downward downward slope it was going away. I was right at the end of the, you know, life of the opportunity and I needed to just go, 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 get in there and do it. And while that's good, you know, you want to take action and get in there and do, make your product and, you know, try and make money as soon as possible. You don't want to overlook all of these things that you should be preparing for, like shipping, like uh, shipping problems or like the expenses or the listing. You don't want to overlook anything or rush into a product that you're not totally confident about. And obviously you won't be 100% confident, but you wanna be you know, 90% confident at least about your investment and you wanna take your time. You wanna protect your money, take your time, do your due diligences and just make sure that you're comfortable investing in what you're putting your money into. You don't wanna just rush because you feel like the opportunity's ending because if you just rush like I did, you might miss a couple things and then you're screwed and then you know you're not totally screwed out of your money but you could be and you're not you now don't have the time to you know keep looking for products or the money to you know fund a new product because you have you know a thousand two thousand dollars tied up in your failed product over here which brings me to my next point just because you have a bad product over here and it's not going very well or you can't sell it on Amazon or whatever the issue is, that doesn't mean that you should just disregard it and pretend like it's not there, like you just lost that money. Because you can still sell it other places. You know, my product that I couldn't ship through Amazon, I just uh, sent myself all the inventory, put it in, uh, put it on my eBay account, and I've been slowly selling out of them, still making about a dollar fifty, two dollars a pack of magnets and you know, it's slow, but I'm still making my money back. I could have just been like, you know, I'm getting rid of them. They're failed and, you know, been out $1,000, but 
you know, you got to stick through it and just try and learn from your experiences. Don't just throw it out and be like, oh, this sucks. It's over, blah, blah, blah. You know, it takes time. You got to learn. There's a learning curve to Amazon, just like everything else. So whatever you have a failure, try to learn from it and don't just throw your failures away. You know, you can still salvage a little bit of money or income from your failed product. Uh, another thing that I wrote was competition. So a lot of people I see in the Amazon group will just, you know, they'll see a higher competition product. Typically you want to aim for about a max of like 50 to 75 reviews. And a lot of people will see, you know, some with 100, 200, and, you know, it'll be pretty competitive. And they'll be like, oh, I'll just spend more on pay-per-click advertising. I'll get traffic from other places and I'll just outrank them. And that's just not, you know, favorable for you. You're probably not going to be able to spend as much as them because how are you going to be spending more if you're not making the money from selling them, you know? Just don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't go into a highly competitive product. I did that and I sold out through Google, but I couldn't even make money off of Amazon ads really. I had like one keyword phrase that I could make money from, the rest of them didn't give me enough clicks. So I don't know. I just, I don't recommend going into something overly competitive. I'd rather go into something that has less sales and is less competitive because then you can rank on page one and then you still have the upside of maybe the, the market will grow for it. But don't go into something too competitive because it's a real headache and a real just money spender. It just zaps all your money because you're spending so much on ads to try and get sales. So, and you're probably never gonna rank. So don't go into something too competitive is one of the biggest things I would say after seven months of doing Amazon FBA and having a product where there was some with like 400 reviews on it. I think the top page I ranked on was like seven and I was getting like two or three sales a day, but I don't even think I ever got organic sales actually. I think all of them were from Google AdWords or Amazon. So nope, high competition, avoid that. And the last kind of bunch of things that I wrote are calculate all of the expenses. So I wrote things like images, advertising, one item for yourself. You know, if you go into a product and you're just like, you know, oh, I have this many and if I sell this many, then I make this much profit. And it's like, yeah, that's great math, but also you got to factor in, you know, Amazon pay-per-click. You gotta have a strategy. You gotta be like, all right, I'm gonna set my budget to this on automatic for this many days, and then take all the good keywords and make it manual, or am I gonna do Google AdWords? Am I gonna do Facebook ads? Whatever you're gonna do, you know, calculate your advertising costs. Make sure you're thinking about all the expenditures that you have. Make sure you're calculating, you know, your Amazon seller accounts, $40 a month. Images are giant. You take away one thing from this video, get professional images done. Make sure your images are just on point. You have about seven of them. You know, you have some people using it. You have nice white backgrounds. Just make sure your images are like crisp and professional. Spend, you know, I think the cost is probably around a hundred bucks to get all your images done. Do it, send a photographer your item, get them done. It'll pay off huge. I trust me, images are the number one thing because when someone sees your ad, you know, the image is what they're basically going off of. So if you have bad image, they're not going to click, not going to buy, not going to trust you. If you have a good image, you look professional, they're a lot more likely to buy from you. So images, 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 and, you know, calculate things like pay-per-click, like I was saying, one item for yourself, you know, if you're going to do a 50 cent removal fee, then, you know, 50 cents is still 50 cents. I actually didn't know about the removal fee when I started off, so I shipped one to myself. If you don't know, you can't buy a product from yourself, so you have to use it in someone else's account and ship it to yourself. But looking back on this, you know, just take a removal fee, 50 cents, get your own product, and you want to make sure that you have your own just because if you get a hijacker or something, you can buy one of theirs and then take a picture of the two next to each other, show Amazon that they're selling something that's not yours, and then, you know, get the hijacker removed. So yeah, calculate all of your expenses. You know, a lot of different costs come up once you start getting into the Amazon game and 
a lot of expenses aren't talked about enough. You know, it's like $100 to somebody like me who's like, you know, all right, I got $1,500, I'm throwing this in. And then it's like, you know, I get there. I'm not setting myself up for success. If I only have 1500 I spend 1500 And then I'm like, oh, like I need $100 for images and I got to still pay for my, you know, Amazon seller account. And it's like all these things add up. So you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. And part of that is knowing that there are going to be expenses that you need to be prepared for. And you need to just have enough money to cover everything so you're not stressing out or you're not cheaping out. You know, if you don't have $100 to spend on images and you just spent $1,500 on a product, you're probably just going to cheap out on the images and that's going to ruin your success with Amazon. So you don't want to make, you want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. So just make sure that you have a good amount of money, a couple hundred dollars for pay-per-click, for images, and you just want everything to be professional and you don't want to cheap out on anything because it's the little details that make a huge, huge, huge difference in e-commerce and Amazon and everything. You know, the person that has a better description and the better, the better uh, keywords and the better images, like it's huge and that's going to make or break your Amazon success. So don't cheap out, make sure you plan ahead for everything. And that's everything that I wrote on this list. You know, it's kind of just from my experience and things that I didn't really think about or do when I started. And I just thought it would be helpful for all of you if you do Amazon and you're looking to start Amazon. And again, if you're looking to start and you don't really know that much about it, feel free to comment below or shoot me a message on social media or something and I'll be happy to help you out. If you're interested in the course, I do have a link down to the course that I took for this. It's Tanner J. Fox's course and the link is in the description. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.